So frailty has been defined in two different ways. One is as a group of disabilities that have or deficits that happen to a person as they get older. Alternatively, there's a physical type of uh, frailty, uh, the phenotype of frailty originally thought of by Dr. Freed, looks at physical deterioration and should separate frailty from disability. Uh, at this stage, we now are looking at saying, are there quick ways to screen for this? And one way is the frail questionnaire. This is, are you fatigued? Uh, can you walk up a flight of stairs, resistance, uh, aerobic, can you walk around a block, uh, illnesses, do you have more than five illnesses, looking for polypharmacy, and loss of weight greater than 5% of weight in the last six months. If you have one or two of these, you're thought of as being pre-frail, uh, more than two is frail. Uh, this scale has been shown in four different continents now to be highly predictive of mortality, hospitalization, nursing home admission, and deterioration in physical function. Frailty varies depending on the age, and in fact, in some of our studies, we've shown in African Americans that about 5% of people who are socioeconomically deprived between the ages of 50 and 60 are actually already having frailty. On the whole, over the age of about 70, about 10% of people are frail. Getting up to around 80, it's about 40 to 50%. The optimal management strategy for frailty is first to recognize it, which is very poorly done by the average clinician. This is one of the reasons we're using screenings like the frail, working with clinicians. But once you do that, is to look at each of the components. So if the person is fatigued, for instance, you have to think, could they be depressed? Could they have sleep apnea, hypothyroidism, or B12? Obviously, if they have problems walking up a flight of stairs or walking a block, here you think about them having socks. Sarcopenia, if they base and you go ahead and you will treat them with vitamin D as well as an exercise program including resistance exercises. If they have a lot of illnesses, you look at the number of drugs. Many patients are on excess drugs. These cause not only fatigue, but they also cause low blood pressure, particularly when they're standing, and cutting back on the drugs makes a, a large difference. If they're losing weight, we say that a couple of things to do. One is to to look for reversible causes of weight loss. We use something called the Meals on Wheels to do this. This looks at medications and depression as a start, but other things such as alcoholism, uh, anorexia of old age, uh, the uh, late life paranoia, uh, swallowing problems, oral problems, nosocomial infections. We see a lot of older people who are H. pylori positive, and when that's treated, they tend to get better, but also tuberculosis would be another example there. Uh, the W is for wandering and other dementia related behaviors. The H covers all the endocrine metabolic disorders, things like hyperthyroidism, diabetes, hypercalcemia, and these need to be looked at and to obviously treated. Then you have uh, the E is for uh, enteral problems. This is celiac disease and pancreatic insufficiency. Uh, the other E is for eating problems. My favorite patients are patients who have a tremor, can't get the food to their mouth and they basically cannot eat without getting that fixed. Uh, the L uh, is for um, a, a variety of different uh, diets that are given to people and we need to keep away from special diets in older people. And then finally the S is for stones, cholecystitis, gallbladder disease. <laughs>